Hey, yo, this is Firefighter Tiger, co-host of the Public Safety Future Responders Podcast. I am back with our 10th episode of our main podcast series. Uh, unfortunately, I would be joined by my co-host, Firefighter Ringeback, but unfortunately, he could not make it today on this recording. I hope all is well with him and that. Uh, so you'll be having me on this episode, audio recording, so I hopefully you all enjoy. Uh, on this edition of our podcast main series, we're going to hit off... We're going to head off onto the rails, and we're going to be talking about fire trains. That is F-I-R-E space train. Not a train on fire, fire train. Basically, for those of you who do not know what a fire train is, a fire train is a train that is designated to fight fires. Uh, because in many areas along railroads, road access is limited or unavailable, so railroads maintain fire trains to respond to fires on or near railroad right of ways. Uh, you'll find them mostly, like, in the United States, for example, you will probably find them out in California uh, during, like, the summertime for, like, help wildfires that are impending on the rail tracks by the BNSF Railroad. Um, over in Sweden, there is a fire train over in Switzerland to help fight fires in a train tunnel. And that... Um, so the primary purpose of a fire train is to protect the railroad's property and right of way. However, when fire trains respond to wildfires near railroads, they allow for firefighters to con concentrate their efforts on other portions of a fire. Uh, so basically, based on the way the train's set up, uh, mostly it's um, the, in the locomotive followed by tanker cars and box cars, and you know what I mean. I'll get to it more in a minute. Um, a little bit of the history on it. Uh, early accounts of fire trains date back to the beginning of the 20th century. Um, in the year 1908, a fire train was reported to have saved the village of Long Lake West in the Anirondacks Park of New York from being destroyed by a wildfire. Well, folks, yeah, we cannot confirm or deny it, but there's probably accounts out there with evidence to back up that fact of that. Um... Moving into the 21st century, uh, fire trains are used to respond to fires which are on or near railroad lines. A fire train can carry large quantities of water. Uh, the BNSF Rail Railways fire trains have a capacity of over 30,000 gallons of water compared to a typical firefighting, uh, to a typical fire engine which carries around 500 gallons. A uh, typical fire train will include several tank cars filled with water or firefighting foam along with water canyons, which can spray anywhere from 30 to 150 feet away from the tracks, both to preemptively wet down flammable materials and to, oops, sorry for the burp, <laughs> and to suppress fires. Uh, some fire trains are also capable of refilling their water supply from nearby bodies of water by using sip hones, which are just kind of like your little, um, kind of like little holes that kind of dive off off the tank into body of water. Uh, while the fire trains are owned by railway companies, not municipality authorities, folks. Just I want to make that perfectly clear. The fire trains are owned by the railway companies, not the municipal not the municipal authorities typically responsible for firefighting. Railroads often coordinate and work with firefighters, such as by using fire train water stores to provide water to firefighters. As the trains include crew accommodation, railroads may also use them to transport firefighters to and from fires, which often occur in rural areas with poor road access, folks. Uh, mostly, folks, when it comes to rural firefighting areas, uh, chances are you'll probably see more of a train, of a firefighting train, um, than fire engine because of road access being restricted in some way or some form, and rail tracks are the best way to go, folks. So... That there's a good cooperation between the municipalities, fire departments, and the railroad companies for areas that have railroad companies. Um, another another example in the United States is the Cedar Creek fire that happened out happened out in Oregon, in the United States. A fire train was seen at the at the Cedar Creek fire back on September 9th of 2002. We all remember that if you lived in the United States, especially if you lived in Oregon, uh, you were on the news for that. And then we got the, the fire train in Switzerland, whose primarily is to kind of respond to the tunnels where the train is um, in Switzerland. So, yeah. So, basically, folks, when it comes to firefighting trains, firefighting trains are owned by the railroad companies, 
that work alongside the municipalities, fire departments to be able to help fight fires along the tracks. And that um, the other thing is also too, not only do you have firefighting trains, but also too, as we're talking about, as this podcast is the Public Safety Future Responders podcast, we also have trains that are also set up for snow removals too, folks. So for public safety on both on and off the rails, we have teams that are working around the clock to be able to be safe and secure on that. And, folks, we have come to the end of our podcast main series, episode 10. I am glad you all hopefully stuck around for our, all our 10 episodes. Uh, we may be possibly putting out one more. Who knows? You'll all find out shortly. So, folks, you all have a good positive weekend. And if you listen to this, you all have a good positive day. And hopefully I brightened up somebody's day and you got to learn something new. And if you didn't, well, folks, then hopefully you found this enjoyable to listen to, folks. This is Fred Fred Tiger, co-host of the Public Safety Future Responders podcast, and y'all, hopefully y'all have a good one, folks. Take care, all, and see y'all in the next one.